Hi, this is Abe for 343 Labs, and I'm here today uh, going to talk a little bit about Bitwig Grid. So last time we did a video about my favorite five things about Bitwig. If you didn't watch the video, you can click up here and watch it there. This time we're going to continue with the Bitwig series, and I'm going to focus on one of my favorite things altogether, which is the grid. Now, what is the grid? The grid is, well, let's say modularity, modularity, modularity. Basically, the grid is a modular sound design environment. There have been other programs that allow you to do sound design. For example, Reactor. Everybody knows about Reactor, but nobody uses Reactor. Well, not unless you're a super geek, because Reactor is really hard to use. However, Britwig brings the power of Reactor and makes it really friendly so that anyone can get going in no time. Let's have a look in here in my computer. I have a, a Bitwig session with nothing in it. Basically, we're gonna work in the grid and I need to just load in one of the two grid devices. Uh, I think there were three at one point announced, but for now at least, we just have the poly grid and the effects grid. I'm gonna work with the poly grid today. I'm just gonna pull session of the poly grid in there. Now it's in there just like any other device. This would be like a, any effect or, or, or instrument that you might want to drop in. Uh, right now, if I double click right here, I can get to this little area where uh, I can see what's going on. Now uh, it comes up with a default uh, sort of setting with a oscillator, a envelope generator and uh, output, a sound output. And uh, it's set up so that you can play with the keyboard, as I am now, playing on my computer keyboard, and trigger a sound. Now, I'm going to just delete the whole thing and start from scratch. So I'm going to start with a blank uh, page here with nothing in it. First of all, I want to run you through the setup here. We have uh, a list of all the devices that appear. Now, Right now, as, you, uh, as of today, um, I think the number of devices is 154. Last time we talked, I think there was 140. But I think they might have added some in the meantime, and I guess they'll continue to add them as we go. But what are all in those devices? Well, we have categories here, which kind of sort them in a very nice way. Uh, inputs and outputs, displays, phase devices, data devices for like uh, you know creating sequencers and so on, oscillators, uh, randomization stuff, LFOs, envelopes, and this list goes on, as you can see here. Um, let's start with uh, an oscillator. We need that to make a sound. And it's just as easy as say, well, I want this sign, wave generator, and I'll just drop it in there. Now, we're not hearing anything because we'll need something to play out the output. All right, so I'm going to now grab an audio out device. We're going to need that to be able to hear something. And I've dropped it in right next to it, and it's not you're not hearing anything uh, because it's not patched into it. Now I can just run a patch cable to it and then you'll hear it run. Uh, however, I could also uh, do this, which is a lot quicker, which is I can just grab the device and put it right here where the patch uh, connector should be and it patches it to it. Move it over and you'll see the patch cable uh, moving on in there. Now let's uh, lower the volume on this a little bit so that you can hear me going. I'll, I'll raise it up in a little bit. Uh, so now I have this uh, sine wave generator, and if uh, if I wanted to, I have this. And this is this brings me to another really amazing thing that makes uh, this so much worth it is that it's already pre-mapped to work with your keyboard, and we call this. Uh, I guess they call it pre-chord, and they have these pre-chords where in the bottom left-hand corner you can see a little keyboard here. That means that this keyboard on my on my computer or any MIDI keyboard that I have plugged in would actually immediately be ready to uh, go ahead and play that. Uh, I didn't need to patch it in. It already kind of ex expects you to want to use that. Now if you don't want to use that, you can actually kill that functionality and then free run as I'm doing right now. Uh, so, And we're going to actually run it that way for the rest of this, uh, the rest of this demo because I want to kind of just do it with the, the stuff that's in there. So we have this... Uh, the sine wave in there, and uh, that's all well and good, but now it's just free running. I'm going to grab a envelope so that we can actually have it not free run, but like, you know, play the way that uh, you might want in some sort of scenario, you know, in, in a track or something like that. 
uh, instead of to just droning. So I'm going to grab an AD uh, attack and decay generator. Sorry, I dropped it in the wrong place. I'm just going to have to click right there, and then it just put it in between that and my and my audio out. Now I put the volume up, nothing is happening since I have a pre chord still there. I can trigger it with my computer keyboard. The gate is still ready to be triggered, uh, but now I could also play notes with it still. But I, I want to do it uh, another way. Now, one of the cool things, and I want to take a little moment here to show you what's happening here. If I click on the any given device, I can have a look, uh, kind of a visual inspector here of what's going on. And there's a nice little graphic of the signal out, uh, which you're not hearing because the, the envelope generator is kind of cutting it off for the moment. Uh, and then we have whatever is pre-corded in there ready to go. So the pre-cord uh, is uh, set with the gate and the pitch. Now, I'm going to need a way to do it without the pre-cording, so I'm going to go ahead and grab me uh, a gate. The gate is going to come here, and just dropping the gate in there, and I'm going to patch that gate into the envelope generator so it triggers. Now the gate is running to the tempo or the phase of the, of the program, and you can see now it's triggering that envelope generator to open and close, well according to how this is set, here on these notes. So if we look at if you just click anywhere on the screen, not on one of these devices, you can see that there's a, a setup here where it tells what the device uh, phase should be, meaning the, the general or the global sort of phase, and it's set to 16th notes, which is, this is what this is kind of pre-corded to. So that's why this is running at 16th notes. I could also eliminate that and get my own device to do that, but that's going a little crazy now. For the moment, I have the sine wave running into this uh, Percussive envelope, let's call it the attack and decay envelope, where I can shorten it and make it longer. I'm going to, I could change the type of uh, waveform it is by skewing it a bit here, or I could do some folding if I wanted to. But I'm basically going to try to make a bass drum with this, so I'm just going to keep it kind of where it is, and maybe change the ratio of the, of the pitch here. Now I've changed the ratio from the baseline pitch of 1 to 2. Maybe I'll make it 1 to 3. Like a really low note there. So I got a really low note playing there. It's kind of a bass drum, but let's make a, a real bass drum with a little bit more punch to it. Let's grab another AD envelope to create kind of a pitch envelope situation. So I'm going to just go ahead and drop that here. Sorry, I'm just going to dump it out here. And now I need to patch this in to control the envelope uh, of, the, of the, the pitch. So I'm going to take the modulation coming out of this and drop it right into here. And now I need to kind of run this guy. So I'm going to take the patch cord from here and offer this a gate here. And what we get now is, and out of all these patches, any output can be patched to several different inputs. Every input can only get patched to one thing. So I can keep on making these and drop them wherever I want. I can even drop them in places they don't belong, technically speaking. But that's kind of fun. Actually, that's all the fun of like modular stuff, because you could kind of run into some happy accidents and do stuff that you're not supposed to, but come up with some really interesting results. So here we go. Now I've patched that in. Um, that pitch envelope is going. i got to give it some action here. And now you can hear the pitch envelope going and doing its thing. I could kind of design how it should present. Longer, shorter, more intense. And now I got kind of a bass drum going on, which is really cool. So let's do just one more thing and let's drop a uh, filter. And easy as just grabbing the filter, going right here and dropping it in between. And now I have a filter that's between both of these guys, got a little drive to it. And now I have a low pass filter, which I can drive a bit more. I can decide if it's gonna be 12, six, 24 dB filter, a uh, little resonance when I like. So, all right, so now we've created a basic bass drum. Uh, 
just as easy as that. So just let me, so let me just run through a couple of the things that I haven't uh, talked about yet. Uh, there's a vast library of modules, as I told you, about 154. Um, this is, this, there's some really cool sound design functions that we have here. Uh, for example, let's say I have this oscillator and I've got some settings going in it, and I decided to switch out to another oscillator. So I go back to, I go to this oscillator and I say, well, I've got a sine wave going up and I want to replace that with a sawtooth. If I drop that in there, it'll keep the values that I had before in the pre previous oscillator. So it'll kind of, you know, just in case that's what I wanted. Most of the time it might be. And it may, or at least maybe close enough to what I had before that it might uh, be something that I needed, especially these things here, pitch envelope and so on. Um, another thing that's uh, really cool is the pre chords, and we talked about those. And you click on any device, and you can see what the pre chords are. And if you look at the bottom left hand corner, you can see the pre chords kind of already here, and you can actually disable them or enable them, wherever you like. And one of my favorite features is the, uh, the help situation here. So if I have this sawtooth and I want to kind of know more about it, I can go click on it and you'll see the stuff here in the inspector where I could go to show help and suddenly I get this beautiful kind of layout with like everything I want to know about this device. Well now what's cool about it is that I also have this graphic here and you usually think it's static, it's just a picture they're showing you. But no, you could come here and actually tweak it while you're actually working and reading and learning at the same time. So it kind of gets you going in a way that you, know, you haven't been able to before. So Grid comes with about 200 presets, and I'm sure they're going to be adding on more. So it gives you a good place to start or check out what has been created before. Uh, every device is oversampled and stereo by default. It's an amazing way to like dive into sound design and go beyond. You know, a lot of the times when you're you know tired of just producing tracks, maybe there's a moment. You know, I know that every time I finish an album, for example, there's a period of time before I start writing stuff and putting stuff together that I spend creating new sounds. And in the next cycle, I'll be coming around and you know creating a bunch of new things with the uh, grid and using it after that. So if you like this series and you're enjoying this grid stuff, uh, comment down below. Maybe we'll continue and make it a whole series. We can, we can take it from just having a bass drum to maybe building a whole track out, if that's what you guys want. Remember to smash the like button. Remember to subscribe. This is Abe Duke for 343 Labs. I'll see you next time. Thank you.